I've had a bit of time to think about my short experience with the new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5 and I have to be completely honest with you guys, it was pretty dull. Now, don't get me wrong, Samsung, please don't get mad at me. It was definitely better than last year's model, but still kind of boring. But let me unpack that statement. See what I did there? And that begins with the first thing you see with this smartphone, its design. At a glance, it doesn't look like much has changed with the Fold 5, and we really can't blame Samsung for it. There are certain limitations that this form factor brings, and like the old saying goes, don't fix it if it ain't broke. But one of Samsung's key improvements to the Fold this year is its hinge, which is great because it does address something that a lot of people have been talking about with previous versions of this phone. Now, I forgot what fancy new marketing term that they gave the mechanism to this hinge, but key takeaway is the gap gone. The Fold and the Flip share this system, of course, and that means that there's less chance for dust and whatnot to show up in your inner display, which is fantastic. Samsung heard us, delivered on what their customers have been asking for, and now because it does fold flat, the Fold is actually thinner too. I don't think that makes the Fold the thinnest foldable in the market right now, but you can really feel the difference and they've even shaved off some material according to the presentation shown to us, which means that the Fold is also lighter this year. That improves the handling of the phone as well. I mean, it's still not a device that you're gonna be using with one hand, but the experience has definitely been improved. No, I don't have the phone with me, so you're gonna to have to imagine the Fold right here. Wow. So just to recap, it looks pretty much the same, but you are getting several key refinements to the Galaxy Fold 5. Now, another way that the Fold is better this year, pretty obvious one, we're getting a specs bump. No surprises here, the Samsung Galaxy Fold 5 is now equipped with a Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 2 processor, and we all know that that delivers the goods in terms of performance. So no matter what conceivable use case you have for the Fold 5, we're pretty confident that the phone can take it. I really don't know why I'm so animated today with my hands. Must be the coffee. Unfortunately, I did forget to check how much RAM the unit that we were allowed to play with had, but I'm guessing it'll top out at 12 gigabytes with storage going up to one terabyte, just like it did last year. Just in case, I will be leaving the official specs for the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5 in the description or as a pinned comment, which I should now have since embargo has now lifted for both the Fold and the Flip. Now let's talk about the displays on this device, which you pretty much guessed it, are the same. The cover screen feels the same, a lot more usable than the first versions of this device, and the inner display is still at 7.6 inches. It still uses their foldable dynamic AMOLED panel that has a refresh rate of 120 hertz. The change here is more on the software end, which we will talk about later. For the battery, I still can't confirm by the time I'm recording this video, but I have a sneaking suspicion it's gonna be 4,400 milliamp hours, but the big change is with its charging speeds. 45 watts, which is still rather conservative compared to the other crazy charging speeds that we're getting with other phones, but a lot better than before. In terms of the cameras, no change in specs this year. 50 megapixel main, 12 megapixel ultra wide, and a 10 megapixel telephoto. But from the images we were able to take during our short hands-on session, the output looks so much better this year because the Fold is now using the same sensor that you can find in the S series. That is one aspect of the Fold that I'm really excited to try out more and I was able to vlog with it a little bit, so here's a quick sample. All right, so quick walk around with the new Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. Just in the room uh, we're setting up uh, and shooting in. So you guys see a difference. Uh, switching over to 0.6. So that's what it looks like. We will zoom in to that bowl of strawberries at times three. Okay, so hardware talk done. Let's finish this up by talking about another key improvement to the Fold 5. It's software which got a few quality of life upgrades. One of which is better app support. Now we weren't able to go online with the phones, but they say that apps like Instagram and TikTok should behave a lot better on the Fold 5 with content being displayed on one side of the display and the comment section being displayed on the other. But I'm guessing that the aspect ratio is gonna be a bit off We'll just have to wait and see. They also talked about improvements to the dock that we saw on the Fold 4. I think the number of previous apps went from two to four so you can multitask more. Anyway, I'm sure they did discuss a lot more during their presentation, but those are the two software improvements that really stuck with me. Again, nothing mind blowing in terms of UI improvements, which I'm also hoping that they'll bring to the Fold 4 because software updates. 
they should do it, right? And that's why I think the Fold is a little bland this year. It's iterative and I can't blame Samsung for that. That's just how the tech game works until they come up with another device that makes our jaw drops just like when they first announced their foldables. They made key refinements to the body, gave it a specs bump to get it to that flagship level. And again, fantastic UI to make this a great foldable device that I can't deny. But what I can't deny as well is that the Fold was overshadowed by the Flip 5 this year. Now, Leia has a dedicated video about the Flip 5. And if you want to watch that, I'll link it somewhere on screen. But I'm curious to know what you guys think of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5. Let me know down below. This is Tita James. Peace. God bless.